In less than one half of XF football, we met the Boozer Bunch, saw the nastiest dragon since Danny Burnt King's landing to a crisp, and had former Broncos backup center Dylan Day drop the quote of the weekend. We're trying to make some stuff happen, and they're doing a little extra pushing and shoving. We're trying to get our fucking job done. Just... And on day two of XFL football, we had our first ejection. The XFL 2020 proved to be a far superior product to the AAF on opening weekend and showed promise for long-term viability as an entertaining and quality spring football league. Today, after watching four XFL games, I'm going to talk about how and why the XFL is already a success, highlight some of the weekend with all of the game recaps dropping tomorrow, Monday. And the craziest part of the XFL, the officiating didn't totally suck. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Sports. Uh, please subscribe here and don't forget to like this video. If you don't like this video, your genitals might fall right off your body. Today's episode though is sponsored by Audible. Audible is the only app I use to download and listen to audiobooks. And no matter what device I listen to my books on, Audible always keeps my place. The best book I have read this year so far is Scrublands, and right now I am learning, yes, learning about history while I listen to Empire of the Summer Moon. It's about the rise and fall of the Comanches, and it's quite fascinating. When you download an audiobook through Audible, the books are yours. You own them forever, and you can listen anywhere offline once you download. With your Audible membership, you get a credit every month to download a new title and a selection of two Audible originals to download. If you don't use your monthly credit, it rolls over to the next month. So visit audible.com slash that's good sports or text that's good sports to 500 500. Again, that's audible.com slash that's good sports to start tickling your ears with other people's words. And now, later in the episodes than ever, welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. We can finally confirm He Hate Me is the single greatest name in sports history, Perna. He Hate Me was trending on Twitter at the start of the Defenders vs. Dragons game, which kicked off the XFL inaugural weekend, which aired on ABC, Fox, and ESPN. Yes, real channels, and not a subsidiary of Fox called FS22 Falcon Cable TV on channel 8695. Plus, you could stream the games from all of those network apps, and Greg Olson and Steve Levy were a pleasure to listen to in the broadcast booth. Defenders with some razzle dazzle to take the lead. Which is the biggest reason the XFL has a far greater chance at succeeding. It is easy to watch, unlike the Alliance, uh, that you needed their app to stream or a cable channel in the most obscure parts of your cable guide list. I felt like I had to write a letter to the cable company to acquire a secret password and then stumble across an Easter egg just to watch a damn Alliance football game last winter. Many of you found this channel because I covered the AAF, and I watched as much AAF football as anyone. But I can say, unapologetically, the XFL is a far superior product. The football, the gameplay is better, and that is another reason the XFL can thrive. It is true that AAF had its moments. Mike Berkovici's decapitation illusion, which earned him the nickname David Blaine, the backwards behind the back pass, Zach Mettenberger getting rocked in the end zone, Trent Richardson having more touchdowns in a game than rushing yards. But at the end of the day, the AAF was a flip phone, and the XFL is the new iPhone. And the NFL, of course, is just like Apple. Now, you can't fake interest. And on Saturday, I told myself I'd watch the first quarter of the Defenders and Dragons game. After making somewhere between 120 and 150 football videos for this dumb channel since August, the last thing I wanted to do this, this weekend was watch more football. Then I watched the entire Defenders and Dragons game because it 
fish hooked me like the dumb bass I am. And then I watched more XFL. Week one of the AAF in 2019 consisted of three games where one team couldn't score more than six points with a 26 to zero blowout between the Iron and Express. On Saturday alone in the XFL, we had a great game between the Dragons and Defenders and a very competitive first half between the Wildcats and the Roughnecks before Houston ran away with it and we saw PJ Walker go off and throw four touchdown passes. The AAF's most prolific passer, Garrett Gilbert, never threw four touchdowns in a single game. The football this weekend was good and it didn't feel amateur. The biggest question though will be if the XFL can sell tickets to their games. The XFL week one game attendance numbers were 17,163 fans at Audi Field in DC. Houston piled 17,815 into TDECU Stadium. Impressive considering the stadium name is just a bunch of random letters like a drunk alphabet. Basically the XFL games were like crowded Chargers home games. Unfortunately though, those numbers were actually lower than the San Antonio Commanders and the Orlando Apollos opening day crowds at 27,875 and 20,191. And comparable to the Birmingham Iron opening numbers and quite a bit more than the Arizona Hot Shots. Now the officiating was better than the officiating in the NFL. The XFL employs college officials and somehow they were more reliant play to play and because the review process was handled by the XFL's version of a sky judge, that ran much more smoothly as well, which is just an official in the booth who has all of the angles like we do at home and can make a decision with his brain in a controlled environment. They like totally got the calls right. Plus, the replay official uses an Xbox controller to navigate replay, way better than the PS4 controllers used in the NFL, and don't get me started about the NBA's mishandling of Nintendo Switch controllers. The new kickoff rules seem pretty cool. I appreciate that the XFL is intelligent enough to figure out a way to make the kickoff safer and more exciting, instead of just being like, uh, it would be real easy just to eliminate the kickoff by making every play a touchback, and once fans become numb to kickoffs, we can remove it from the game entirely. Just like the NFL is doing. I think uh, over time we will see more electrifying plays on special teams in the XFL, and Sunday we saw the first kick return nearly break the distance in the Guardians-Vipers game. The most important thing the XFL is doing, though, is making the game more intimate. Not with dim lighting and roofies like Bill Cosby, but with mic'd up audio from the coaches streaming during plays, player interviews after success and failures on the field, and even live looks into the player locker room at halftime. It was fucking awesome. Literally, my only complaint is nobody was naked in the locker room at halftime. I always thought the players got naked at halftime to help them all bond so they played harder in the second half. Get hard, play hard. That's the way I remember football. Now the immediate sideline interviews were a hit. After Cam Phillips scored a 50 yard touchdown in the Wildcats and Roughnecks game, he explained uh, what they had been working on to set up that play. Pretty mundane stuff there, but I enjoyed knowing even a professional athlete who runs 50 yards still gets winded. And there will be a lot of moments where the interview answers are cliche. Uh, just a blessing, blessing from God. Uh... You know, it wouldn't be possible without all these guys sitting next to me. So, uh, you know, like I said, just a blessing and opportunity to be here. Or where a player is waiting for a follow-up question that never comes, like me after four whiskeys. In the ball to Trey Williams, so, uh, you know, we'll sit back and watch. Thoughts from Grant and Silvers. He's played in some big games, won a big game while at Troy. But every now and again, we will get gold. We're trying to get our fucking job done. And I'm all about the fucking gold. We're trying to get our fucking job done. Good answer, fake answer, crazy answer. We want to see the emotions of players in the moment. That's real and authentic, and fans gravitate to that. There's this idea that you shouldn't say the wrong thing, and the NFL adheres to that hardcore. People like guys who say crazy shit. Just look at who's president right now. The access is so personal that the XFL airs audio during player injuries. That surprised me. Dragons quarterback Brandon Silvers went down with an ankle injury late in the game, and they aired the conversation he was having with team trainers. It was fascinating. Watching for that right ankle. 
Ja, das war eng. I'll be alright. Uh, maybe not today, but I'll be alright. I have no idea what the XFL will be willing to air during an injury. Obviously, it's important to be respectful to the players, and I'm not sure any of us would truly want to hear the screams of agony say a guy like Alex Smith released when his leg disintegrated in front of our eyes. But if they will give us a taste, we will drink it up. We will drink it up like Daniel Day-Lewis and there will be blood. Now, people made a big deal about defenders kicker Ty Rosa having to answer immediately following a missed field goal. Once I got over the fact that he looked like Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg from The Fifth Element, I thought he handled that pretty smoothly. I'm here with Ty Rosa, the kicker. Uh, I know you haven't kicked in you know, a meaningful game in about two, three years here. Just for you getting it back out there, you're gonna get another chance. Yeah. Sort of, what's your mentality going forward? Right now, I just gotta go back to basics. Um, just trying to rush it. That was all it was, I was trying to do too much. I just gotta assemble it down and just do my job. All right, thanks. Because I personally would have blamed everyone but myself for the miss. The snap was bad, the holder was still drunk, and God farted, which caused a gust of wind that was only felt on the field. What do you expect me to do? Make a kick after all of those things happen? I don't think so, Sarah, or whoever the hell it is interviewing me, but that's just me. How great would the sound bite have been if a mic got shoved in Cody Parkey's face after the double doink. It would have been good, and I love these interviews. Not only for the entertainment value. Being involved and... Heads up, Troy. Jeez, Troy. Get out of the way, Troy. <laughs> You're gonna get me killed over here, aren't you? Troy's like 120 pounds right now. He looks incredible. Hello. But it does a couple positive things. It humanizes the players, forcing people to remember these are men out there. They are human beings having real human emotions prone to making mistakes just like the rest of us. And it helps us get to know the players. That's key when trying to introduce an entirely new league filled with guys most of us have never heard of. If you're legitimately curious about XFL football, I do not believe it will disappoint. So if you're legitimately curious about XFL football, it won't disappoint. It will be a long time before any league challenges the NFL, and we need a much bigger sample size, but the XFL got a lot of things right this weekend. So, nice start, XFL. Thanks for watching. That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna, and yes, I will recap all the games tomorrow, Monday. Those will be up right here on the U of Tubes.